So let's actually apply this empirical rule. It says that the mean height of US women aged 18 to 35 is 64.5 inches with a standard deviation of 2.5 inches. Draw the normal distribution. So we have the picture here. So I am, I'm gonna zoom in for a second. So I'm gonna draw the mean in the middle. 64.5 inches. Now the standard deviation is two and a half inches. So let's add 2.5 to get to one standard deviation above the mean. Let's add another 2.5 to get to two standard deviations above the mean. And we add a 2.5 again and we'll get 72. And then let's subtract 2.5 once. That's 62. Again, and one more time, and now we are we are good to go. So this is this is just you know mapping that pattern we saw, or that the empirical rule onto this particular example. So I want to fill in the sections like we did yesterday, uh, yesterday, like we did in the last slide. That's 34%, that's 34%. We learned that's 13.5%. That's gotta be 13.5%. Uh, this was 2.35%. And this little tail has to be 0.15%. And <clears throat> so there's a lot we can say without having to pick up the calculator. This says, what is the 84th percentile for the distribution? Well, it's the height below which 84% of the data lies. So again, if you're here, obviously you're at 50% if you're at the mean. If you go another 34, if you go one standard deviation to 67 inches, that gets you to 84. So I'd say 67 inches is the 84th percentile. <clears throat> What is the two and a half percentile for the distribution? Again, that's the data value below which 2.5% of the data lies. And you'll notice that 59 and a half inches has exactly, if you sum these two sections up, exactly 2.5% below it. So 59.5 inches. And then the last question says, what percent of women are taller than 72 inches? And again, that, that's not a, that 72 is chosen specifically because it's one of the numbers that are that is an exact um, you know integer multiple of a standard deviation above the mean. So the percentage of women taller than 72 percent is 0.15 percent. Okay, so the empirical rule helps us with problems that are exact that have uh, questions involving you know precise whole numbered standard deviations away from the mean. Let's do one more example here. The mean grade on the LSSAT test was 73% with a standard deviation of 3%. So I'm going to translate that to our normal model here. And we're going to use the empirical rule. So 73% means that's the mean. And if you add one standard deviation, that's 76 percent, and um, add one more standard deviation, you're at 79 percent, one more, you're at 82 percent, and now let's subtract. And now we've got, we've got the whole story here. Okay, so now let's use the empirical rule to fill in the sections like we did before. So we know that that's 34%. We know that's 34%. We know that's 13.5%. 13.5, we know this is 2.35%. And we know each tail here is 0.15%. Okay, and so now we've got everything we need. About what percent of students scored higher than 79%? Well, we can find that data value above which 
um, well, we can find, well, we can just find 79%. It's one of those key values. And above that is 2.5%. About what percent of students scored higher than 70%? We find 70%. And you can think in two ways. One is to just find the percent that lie below that which if you do 13.5 plus 2.35 plus uh, 0.15, I believe you get 16%. And then you just minus that from 100, and you get 84%. Don't get confused if the percentage is used in two different contexts. It just so happens that this, the units in the, st in the stats test happen to be percent. Um, but that, so that those percentages are different than the ones there in the curve the, itself. So that's just a quick, you know, introduction to the empirical rule. Um, you know, it's just, it's sort of this rule of thumb that can be used in the absence of a calculator.